Welcome to this week's episode of Two Guys and Some Horror. I'm really excited to hang out this week with Clark because we have a listener submitted episode. This is uh, only the second listener submission that we've really gotten. Uh, the first was from a user on Twitter called Hot Crack Rat. But this week, all the, the glory and all, all the praise goes to Sasquatch Prime. Oh. Uh, as always, I'm, I'm very happy to be hanging out with Clark this week. We'll get to him in a second. Uh, but the film that we're doing is Shocker from 1989, directed and written by Wes Craven, um, stars a slew of fun people. Um, but Clark, how are you doing this week, bud? I know you got a mouthful of food, so it's the perfect time to bother you. I'm doing great, man. I'm doing really good. I got to watch uh, Joe Rogan murder a bunch of people as Thunder Man. I had a good time. That's awesome. So... Um, the stars of the film, speaking of Joe Rogan, uh, stars of the film, we got Peter Berg, who plays Jonathan. He's our ma uh, main character. He's had an amazing career. If you look at his IMDb, he's done a lot of different films, um, and he's a really well-known producer now. So hats off to him from having such a big career. Our killer, who looks like Joe Rogan, is uh, Mitch Pileggi. Um, I don't really know what else Mitch got up to in his career specifically, but I mean, I think he just morphed into... Joe Rogan, and that's what we have. That him. was Skinner. He was Skinner from the X Files. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, nope. not a big X Files <laughs> guy, so I don't, I don't know all that. That's like, that's who he is, man. That's that's his identity. Like Skinner is a major character in the X Files, nice. and the fact that that kind of pencil necked character is this villain, like you wouldn't expect that unless you looked it up. At least for me, that's funny. And then the other person they say is a star is john tesh who's just a tv newscaster um and and i feel like there's more people who got kind of left out so for instance ted Raimi, which is sam Raimi's brother he's in this film uh ted Raimi actually plays pac-man not a big role but he's there then you have jessica craven which is wes craven's daughter so she's in the film and then you have Heather Lagenkamp, who is Nancy from A Nightmare on Elm Street. Obviously, another Wes Craven film, right? So surprising that she didn't have a big role in this movie. She was just a victim. I mean, you can't be a major character in every single like, movie, even though the Raimi brothers and, uh, you know, Wes Craven tend, tend to love to shove each other in one another's films especially with their friends, but I don't know. I guess victim just doesn't seem like a justifiable role to me for Nancy. She's got better acting for Nancy? skills. Yeah. Maybe she was just having fun being in this film. It's possible. Who knows? And, you know, she might have been struggling to get work. Being main role of Nancy is, is serious business. Maybe just a little bit less effort in this role. Regardless of, of what this is, uh, I... I enjoyed this film. It felt like, uh, I don't know. Where, where do we really want to start with discussing it? Do we want to kind of go into what, what this movie felt like for you, Curtis? Or um, I'm, I'm totally fine uh, giving kind of my initial thoughts um, since it is yeah. like a listener requested or listener submitted film. I think, you know, wherever we start, we start. I think giving a good basic understanding of the story is probably a safe choice because um, – I'm not sure a lot of people have seen this movie. You know, it is uh, a bit of an older film, even though it is from Wes Craven. Um, you know, it was only a $5 million budget. It wasn't like a big blockbuster hit. In fact, it flopped um, pretty hard in the, you know, in its release, which kind of sucks. That would be a shocker for me. <laughs> shocker! Get out of here. There's um, the door. We'll get we'll get to the music as well because the music I know you and I both uh, had Bangers. a lot of fun with it. Yeah, bangers. Um, so basic story. Uh, do you want to do the basic story? Or you want me to hit it? I mean, a basic story. I mean, this movie. So you said this movie flopped, but it, it like missed the mark by like five hundred thousand on opening. But it's gross, more than made up. Yeah. So especially worldwide, we I always have issues with the IMDb numbers, right? Because to us, yeah. Um, 
it looks like it made its money back and had oh, a pretty yeah. good deal. But to those who worked on this film, they they admit openly, admittedly said it was a flop. It just didn't do what was expected of it. So I don't know if that's just the studio being pissed it didn't make more money. I don't know if it's the actors or the director, you know, Wes Craven himself thinking it should have made more, but they there were some memorable faces in this film. Definitely. There was some decent acting. There was some you could definitely tell they were trying to go for something very similar to Flash Gordon back in the uh I think the nineteen seventies with, with the way they made this film. Cap. Okay. And, uh, you know, you have something fantastic that's happening. This kid, like, basically fights off. This the story revolves around our hero. There's a heroine. It follows the basic journey of the hero where he tries to fight, fend off against the villain and save the girl. It's It's a pretty normal, yeah. I mean, you have hero, you have villain, you have love story even involved. Um, which yeah. I'm sure you'll have some funny wisecracks when we get to that point. But yeah, basically, like a comic book movie, really. you've got a serial killer who ends up getting, um, you know, the first, I'd say the first act of the film is just him kind of carrying out his vengeance and having pretty much ease at doing it. Like he's one really smart serial killer. He's tech savvy. First 30 minutes of the film is just him kicking ass and yeah. they can't even catch him when he's alive. 30 minutes in. So it's, and I would say the first thirty minutes are the best part. Bluntly, it it's a it's a very strong open for a film. I I thought for sure we had already left the first act multiple times and then got brought back and realized no, like we're still in that first act of this film uh, a few times. But time, I don't know. So that's the other thing weird about this with time is like I didn't feel like it flew by or that it was too slow. I felt like the pacing for the movie was pretty good up until. Um, I don't want to spoil it just yet, but up until later on in the film, when um, prison, there's yeah, the gel. <laughs> you got it, baby. Yeah, there's some weird parts uh to this That's film stupid. for sure. <laughs> that that pulled me out of the immersion of the film at that point. I was like, all right, they're they're having fun with this. They're I'm not supposed to take this seriously. Yeah, I mean, so and I don't want anyone to think that we're saying that this movie is perfect or, you know, an amazing horror film uh, by any means. It is what it is. It's an eighties. It's a late eighties, uh, you know, horror schlop kind of a feel, but it, it's really well done. I mean, it is, it's, it's, um, I don't want to use the, I always say charming whenever I think of stuff like this, but I don't, I don't want to use that here. I want, I would rather use something else, but I guess that might end up being the best way for me to describe it. <laughs> So, when the cop is, or not the cop, when, when Horace Pinker, like, finally, like, when the kid points out where he is, he's like, I saw him in a dream. His adopted father is a cop, and this is what leads to him getting his powers. And that whole first 30 minutes is fucking great. So, but when he does that, like... Basically, the the journalists like throw it all up on the news like very loud. This kid knew exactly who the killer is. His name is Horace Pinker. Here's a picture of where he lives. Here's a picture of his girlfriend. So naturally, there's there's a confrontation between the killer and this kid mm -hmm. in this thirty minute period. And they they, they even call out that he's a. So... They even call out that he's like a football star at a specific high school or wherever he, a college. Yeah. And like so, to yeah. your point, they're the the freaking the the news basically just tells Horace Pinker where to, where to go find Jonathan and kill him. That's basically what right, right, right. Up. But bef and even before <laughs> that, like the cops are so dumb, like they turn around and there's this the cop and they're like, oh hey Sarge, it's not their sergeant unless like Horace Pinker's been moonlighting. So they have no facial recognition yeah. on this fellow cop, like at all. They just look at his uniform and assume that hey, this is the guy. Right. This is our friend. Hey, hey, it's his using uniform. What else would we expect? And you look at the guy who actually was in the uniform. He has a full head of hair versus Horace Pinker being completely bald. Their faces look different. It's, it's funny. You know, they, they, he looney tuned them. When you text me um, that you feel like this was a Batman villain, this yeah. 30 minutes, I completely agree. 
the entire first 30 minutes of this movie. I, I agree completely. Neither well, he I feels I... like Calendar Man at the first 30 minutes, but mm-hmm. I would honestly say that he's more than Calendar Man. Well, I just he's, feel uh... like it's more of a Flash, like you mentioned, the Flash, um, Flash Gordon. It feels more like that as the movie goes on and progresses uh, later on with the, even with the effects. I... I can see Batman fighting this guy as he keeps sure. taking over body after body and him finally taking over. I mean, that, that'd be a fine Batman time. Well, I mean, Same in- bat time. Interestingly enough, this was supposed to be a television series. It wasn't supposed to be a movie. Mm. Um, that was the first idea that Wes had. He, he basically came up with this um, while he was working on A Nightmare on Elm Street. It was during... Right. The diminishing returns on two and three dream warriors um, is when he actually came up with the character Horace Pinker and and the whole story behind, you know, a guy who ends up uh, tra- using electricity to come back from the dead to then carry out his, you know, his his plot, um, having the football player involved, even all that jazz. Um, I just to to we were talking about initial thoughts and, and like kind of how we feel about the movie. I feel like this movie um, has some very weirdly, strangely similar occurrences to other Nightmare on Elm Street films, uh, particularly one, two, and three. Um, I bulleted. So them. you get the same vibe as the. Uh, I kind of under. I kind of see where you're going with that. Kinda. So I listed. I listed them out in my notes, and I. I'm gonna. Gi- I'll give them to you, and then we can kind of yeah. say. You can give me like the, yeah, 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 I see that, or I don't know, that's a stretch. You you just be honest, you tell me. All right, we'll start with the beginning. Let's so the, the opening scene of A Nightmare on Elm Street, you have Freddy working on his glove. The opening scene of this film, you've got Horace Pinker working on his tools in his little workshop. That's your title screens. Okay. Uh, the next one is, uh, so in A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 specifically, you've got Jesse who has the dreams connecting him to Freddy. And he can see when Freddy's making the kills. Um, there's a little bit more of possession going on with Jesse. But in this, Jonathan just dreams that he's at the place where Horace is committing the crime. So there's that similarity there. Um, so both heroes have commitment Yeah, there is issues. the dream connection, huh? Yeah. Um, both heroes also have commitment issues when it comes to females. Jesse, Jesse does in the first, uh, or in Nightmare on Street 2. Uh, and then Jonathan does... Uh, in this film as well, when it comes to committing to to his girlfriend, um, and both their friends make jokes about it as well. Um, both their guy friends. What are his commitment issues? What? What were his commitment issues? Because he goes with a locket. So, who? Jesse or Jonathan? This film or a Nightmare on Elm Street? Sorry. Film. This film. So, uh, Rhino makes a joke that uh, Jonathan can't. Uh, commit to his girlfriend for whatever reason he's just he doesn't have commitment or he has commitment issues but she's living with them yeah which i mean i don't know what the joke entailed but so maybe that one i don't get that (laughs) we'll cross that one as a stretch um freddy can go between dimensions right dream world real world uh horace pinker can also go between dimensions electricity television world whatever it is and to the world of TV. Yeah. Um, Wes Craven has a weird infatuation with waterbeds, I feel like, because Jonathan has mm-hmm. a waterbed in this film, and uh, Johnny Depp's character in the first Nightmare on Elm Street had a waterbed. And both of them kind of end up having issues with the waterbeds. I would say he has issues with furniture in general. <laughs> Freddy is, either turns into furniture or turns people into furniture as well. Quite yeah, a and bit. Then, that's right. And then Horace Pinker moves the... Um, that the chair end table right with the tv on it he turns it yeah he, when he turns into the the massage chair oh, no, no, we'll, we'll get to killer it. sofa later don't worry killer sofa <laughs> that's the best moment of the whole series i think that's probably the clip people would know would recognize if they've seen it before definitely more I people mean, have seen that clip, that clip than they've seen this movie it definitely uh, gets ingrained in your mind very quickly it was uh, goofy it was like <laughs> there's a movie called killer sofa mm-hmm. and it reminds me that that kill scene reminded me of it, and I'm like, I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to watch that is together. It still, is it still on your list? I thought you had it on there before. Uh, I it might not be, but it will um, be soon. We'll put it on there if it's not. So I have two more uh, 
mention or two more items that made me feel like this was like you know very similar to a nightmare nightmare on elm street the first one is the mention of soul taking uh so when horace is attacking jonathan um or no horace is inside of coach cooper and uh his girlfriend comes out and she's like don't let him take your soul kind of a thing so the idea of taking over somebody's soul um and then Freddy, that's what he's doing. He's collecting souls. That's his whole goal, right? The whole ghost girlfriend thing was absurd, too. Yes, yes it was. And then he has sex with his ghost girlfriend. Because you got to have ghost sex. Well, he didn't want to leave, okay? He wanted to stay there forever anyways and be a ghost. But the, the zombie best friend who loved him too much to let his his dad, who is... Spo- spoilers! The killer's his dad. Plot twist. Darth Vader. Oh no! Spoiled whole movie. Uh, it's they, literally there's tons in of the like name. That. <laughs> yeah, they they pull out the uh, like it's his father over and over and over again. They ham fist it in there, and he just shoves it at you after his thirty minutes. And like the kid doesn't remember anything about the the tragic backstory that he has. He's got all the uh, he's got all the superhero backstory stuff. He just has the ability to dream and see people killing. Kind of with his his magical PTSD that he got from shooting his dad uh, when he was a kid. Yeah, the little shit shot him in the knee. Now he has a limp. Yeah, but he still oh uh, he still has the ability to possess people and you know move in and out to other bodies when he prays to his spirit TVs. The little girl limp cracked me up. Oh right. Because he takes, so he takes Dude. over the body of a little girl on a tricycle, which was not a reference right. to Wes Craven, but also something he's done in A Nightmare on Elm Street. That's funny. He loves tricycles in his um, movies. <laughs> there, I mean, little girls riding tricycles singing one, two, Freddy's coming for you is pretty creepy. Not so much in yeah. this film. Um, but yeah, so he takes over the little girl's body, and as she's running, like, she's dragging her leg, you know, but it's oh, like yeah. this weird... Uh, props to the little girl actor i think i said that but you did you texted me that you you really thought she did a good job i agree i think she did a very good job um in this film i think they used a small like a dwarf for the jumping off the bulldozer though when she jumps off the bulldozer to get away because it's it it looks like a lady in a wig um yeah it probably is illegal to have children do stunts like that yes so it makes sense yeah um yeah so i i think this is as good as time as any to kind of segue the the if we want to talk about any of horace's um possessions i guess why are we gonna i'm gonna say the couch is my favorite the couch is your favorite talk about that later there there are quite a few like he first he possesses the doctor uh and then after he possesses her and like she's walking out, you hear like the the paramedics are in there and they're checking the body, and the kid's like, "No, that wasn't him," because he the main villain like just evaporates, catches on fire, and disappears. Yep. Little Some do people, they know wicked where voodoo. he actually could be. What's that? He does like wicked voodoo because he's totally into like black magic yeah. and um with the TV and the TV's like a pair of MTV lips that will, that is sexually into him or something. Who knows? We're gonna. <laughs> Avoid that weird thing. Yuck. <laughs> no, that was weird because he prays to a TV and goes, you got it, baby. That's it. Yep. No more backstory on his powers. He's the ability to swap bodies. So he possesses like the doctor. And then during that period, like the paramedics that are there, I could have sworn, man, one of them sounds like Rick Sanchez from Rick and Marty. I didn't hear. Are you okay, it. there, buddy? <laughs> you didn't. You didn't hear him. I, well, I didn't catch. I didn't catch that feel. Because um, when you messaged yeah. me, I was watching it as well, and I was like, "Okay, I'll look out for it." It just. I didn't. I didn't hear the same. Uh, the same voice. I wish I did. It would have been a lot funnier. Hang in there now, buddy. You're, you're gonna be. You're gonna be just. Just fine. <laughs> if he, I, maybe, maybe if he had, had the me, burp. but that's what I heard. Maybe if he had the burp, it would have helped. Who knows? And every time, every time he switched bodies, though, man, it, it looked like he was about to mount someone. Almost every time. Well, you have to get him. Like, you have to get in there real good to transfer the soul. 
Remember when he swapped bodies with a police officer and then he climbed on top of that other person and mounted them? Yeah. I'm pretty sure he mounted almost every single one of the bodies he swapped into. I'm not going to comment on anything so, regarding... Uh, <laughs> so back to the, um, like, I don't know, the main... That the main scene. Hold on a second. My dog's going nuts. I like to dance and sing and wear underpants on my head. Oh, yeah. Curtis, it is I. Okay, so what I was trying to say is the jogger. Right, the jogger is actually Wes Craven's son as well. I just wanted to make sure I threw that right. fun fact out there while we were here. Did not know the, but that is some trivia. The craziest part about those that whole scene, Horace is shooting at Jonathan like twenty shots, twenty bullets. I don't even care about reloading. Nothing. Okay, whatever. We'll get past that. But it only took one shot to take down that jogger kid. One shot. <laughs> But he couldn't hit Jonathan the, the the millions. And this is throughout the entire film. I don't know if it's like a long-running gag that Wes Craven kind of had in there or what. But it didn't matter what time of the movie it was. Not It didn't matter what body Horace Pinker had jumped into. No one could shoot. They're like stormtroopers. Yeah. Yeah. I Also, check out Existential Troop Stormtroopers uh, on YouTube, by the way, if you haven't. Because they talk about why they always miss. It's almost as if the universe doesn't want them to. Uh, yeah, but and he's he's always limping whenever he takes over a body, almost. Almost always. So it's like that limp kind of carries over. Which is good, because, I mean, if, he's, if it's his soul and there's some rule on it, at least the consistency is there. That's nice. Um, That's what'd you think? Cool. What do you think of the fight scene between Jonathan and Horace on the rooftop before he gets caught and electrocuted and all that? I, I I don't remember the fight on the rooftop. Honestly, the, the only fight I remember is the once they get inside, they get sucked inside the TV. Okay. Like that superseded everything else. Because I thought the, the so the rooftop scene looks like an old school WWF match, like someone from the WWF choreographed it. Uh, and I thought it was actually really it was a it was a really good fight. Um, and then later on, you know, it just kept getting better and better and better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As soon as he got the body transform or the body transfer ability, that's when the movie went insane. Like the ghost of the girlfriend shows up. Uh, the coach saves the day, but doesn't because sacrificial lamb character. The go the ghost of the girlfriend fighting him when he's out of the house. Like he's no longer taking over the house. Like shoots like a laser out of her chest. Like Care Bear stares him and throws them into another room. I, I I was just like so I was like, okay. I have nothing <laughs> left to give. I mean you do I have nothing left to give. The movie's so good throughout, I think, leading up into a lot of that <laughs> the, those types of scenes where I think I honestly I think once the girlfriend dies, um and they still wanted love to be the they answer. They hammed it up. They just Her put, death was... They just shoved it in. They didn't... I mean, they just... We're going to do it. We don't care. Whatever. You know, we're just going to make it happen. I, At I, the I very just, bottom, you see, for your consideration <laughs> for an Oscar. Like, that. no. And she didn't die. She's still a ghost. Yeah. I mean that that just begs a whole nother question of like who whose understanding of how you know the afterlife works did did Wes Craven go with on this because we see afterlife so many different ways right there's a there's a huge long list of different ways that you can do afterlife you can do it you know with ghosts just with a spirit you can do it you can even do zombies you could do I mean there's a million ways we could have seen this think about idle hands they bring back the friends to keep the comedy effect going they just bring them back as zombies, yeah. you know? They don't really explain the voodoo into why they come back. They just come back. The parents don't right, come back, right. but the friends do. I don't know. It's crazy. But the whole ghost girlfriend, um, it is. And the necklace, like, just to add on to it, the damn necklace. Why is the necklace so important? 
you know, because it was hers. But but why? But why? Um, drives so, me nuts. This might be a, like a, a complete segue, but yeah. Aside from like how, how fantastic this movie gets, it gets it's it gets a bit fantastic. We just you should just with withhold any of your your disbelief. Well, and just be ready just for be it. Like, yeah. Yeah, just, no, it doesn't have to make sense to be to yeah. be good. We've said that over and over. And it doesn't and, really hurt the film, I think, in any way. If anything, it just no. makes it more just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a comic book movie. That's what this is. They're just having fun. There's there's a ghost girlfriend here. Like, you know, Joe Rogan's running around killing people, and then he starts taking over their bodies, and then he gets into a fight inside a TV set. I'm oh nation God. not white now, baby. I mean, his one-liners are top-notch. Top-notch. Finger notch. licking good. Finger licking good. Um, I I would yeah I actually this is probably I I would put this above Nightmare on Elm Street like bluntly. I think this is probably my favorite Wes Craven film that I've seen, and uh, it's not that I and I know I'm poo poo I'm poo pooing on it a lot because. There's a lot to poo-poo on, which that's fine. It's a fun movie. It's just insane. It's an insane movie. Yeah. I love it. It's great. Yeah, and remember, I mean, that's that's the awesome thing about horror movies is like my list is going to be completely different from your list and completely this different. This is from what you want else's. out of us. Yeah. I feel like this is what you want out of like a supernatural slasher film. Uh, I kind of wish they played a bit more into the abilities of like him killing people and body swapping moved away from the girlfriend, like kill her at the end. If you're going to kill her, don't bring her back as a ghost. Do you think Jason that goes was... to hell ripped off body swapping from this movie? Oh man, that's another can of worms. <laughs> I don't think you're ready for that. I, I would say Jason goes to hell did body swapping probably the worst out of any film. <laughs> But we can have that conversation later on the this, next uh, Friday the Thirteenth episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. All right. So we definitely want to talk about the music. That I think is a huge. Um, yes. That was a huge positive from both of us. There was like just so many awesome songs. Um, I pulled up the soundtrack just so that way I make sure I don't miss um, any of the names. But the fun fact that I have for you specifically about the music. Uh, is during the park scene also when Pinker's still jumping from body to body, jumping through so many bodies. The last body that he takes over is that male road worker, the one with the long black hair. And he had the pickaxe, p- uh, picks the uh, necklace, and then throws it into the lake, right? So it's that guy. Um, right. That's actually Alice Cooper's old uh, guitarist, uh, Kane mm. Roberts. Interesting. Very good to know. Kane yes. Roberts, you say? Yes. Take that to the bank. And he actually performed I, 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 the the theme song for this movie. Shaka. The dudes of wrath. Yes. Yeah. The the dudes of wrath. They performed three three out of the uh, the ten songs on the album. Well, two if you count the reprise, or don't count the reprise. But yeah, Iggy <laughs> Pop, Megadeth, Bonfire, Soraya, Dangerous Toys, and Dead On. And then you have their uh, the one that was composed by the. Uh, the theater team themselves, the awakening, which is done. Like, I think it's just the synth song. That I think get. I spent a good portion of my day just, just getting ready to have a really awesome music day tomorrow. Uh, because the dudes of wrath, I've, I haven't like, I can't say that I've actually gone out looking to see what all they've worked on. So I'm really excited to compile a list oh. of like eighties rock. Um, and, and just have a good, you know, a good music day tomorrow. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. You're excited? Thumbs too? up to that, my brother. We're going to listen together. Um, maybe. I don't know. Oh, well, maybe if you treat me right. If you buy me a Sodi mm. Pop. And Here, I'm going to reach through the, back through, the, through the screen like Horace Pinker, Pinkerton. Do you feel that? Do you feel it? Do you... Uh, how about you reach through the screen like in video drum? Uh, that that's a whole nother level of creepy um tear it out of your chest uh anyhow i i have i don't know i could talk about the character i thought he was a doofus uh jonathan yeah yep my first note was um 
What is with this bumbling jock idiot? You, you said that to me, yeah. Yeah, I like that was it. my first note. I was like, what? He the first the the first few minutes we meet him, he drops a quote about you know Schneider being a really good football player, which I think is a reference to Nightmare on Elm Street 2's Coach Schneider, because after he retires mm-hmm. from playing football, he goes to become a coach at the school. Maybe maybe it's a reach. I don't know. Could be. But thought it was funny. Um, and then like he goes to football practice, ends up checking out you know looking at his girlfriend on the sideline, gets knocked out by Rhino. Then he ends up, you know, tricking Rhino, which is fine. You know, that's, you know, it's all good and whatever. You could do that shit. Hey, your shoe's untied. Bam, gets past him. Looks good. But then he's talking trash again, runs into the damn field goal post, has a concussion. And that's what sparks his uh, ability to dream. Like, that literally launches the whole premise of the movie. Um, I don't, yeah, I thought it was stupid, too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was stupid, too. What can you do? You don't need any exposition aside from that. I mean, what is the, uh, did we watch the movie with Christopher Walken where he is able to, I think it's the dead zone. We have not watched that yet. Okay. So Christopher Walken basically has a concussion or he, he's in a coma for years and he gains the ability to predict the future of someone by shaking their hands or by touching them at certain points. So very good book, probably one of the best Stephen King novels ever written and a fantastic movie. So recommend that as we segue into other movies, as we talk about this, but yeah, I I agree with you on the main character. Thought he was a doofus, thought his powers were a little goofy and if he had commitment issues, why did he live with his girlfriend and buy her things? Yeah, I don't, and, I'm, I'm trying to think of the thing. I can't. I can't remember the context. And of the, the thing quote. with the locket, the thing with the locket, he lost it, and then he gets it back from dreams, from ghost sex. Hey, you would have sex with your your dead girlfriend too if you could. No, <laughs> no, not even in Ghostland. I mean, maybe, but get a, get a little, uh, you know. How many proton? girlfriends have have I not broken up with? Like, like <laughs> my dead girlfriend. That's so morbid. I didn't like, realize. I didn't. Think well, I'm gonna murder turn. you just so I can see I if did... I can. <laughs> I did not think that this is the you know, the direction. What what take. what's the direction you're trying to take this, Curtis? <laughs> I wasn't trying to take it anywhere. Like, will you I murder was... your girl? No, no, Curtis, I will not. <laughs> no. Okay, stop suggesting it. The FBI uh, is listening to you. For those listening at home, Curtis did not suggest <laughs> any of them. <laughs> we do not recommend killing anyone. Um, please don't. Please, please, yeah, that is illegal. Uh, call the police if you know anyone who, who is trying to do that. Uh, <laughs> also, I, I just want to throw this out there. Happy Thanksgiving, folks, because this is our Thanksgiving gobble, episode. Gobble, yeah. <laughs> Gobble, I thought that gobble. was a Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, it is. It technically is. Um, it's the one pre. Gobble, you know, gobble, motherfucker. It's the episode the week prior to Thanksgiving was. Last oh right, week's right. This is three. this is after Black Friday. This People is, are recovering. Yeah, you're probably oh, you're probably guys, hungover. Man. Of you know, pissed <laughs> pissed that you had to hang out with family. Maybe you're not pissed you had to hang out with family. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, you know, happy Thanksgiving for our U.S. listeners. Watch Shocker if you have to. <laughs> if you have, I mean, honestly, not a bad movie to watch. Uh, Killing no, no, time. Watch, this, watch this film. Check it out. If you, like, if you like the Friday the 13th movies, definitely recommend checking this out. Like, it was fun. There's a lot of different plot points in it that I don't think they're worth kind of going over. If, if you watch it, you'll, you'll go, oh, yeah, that is a plot point. Oh, that's a plot point, too. Really, it's just a fun flick. All right. I appreciate uh, Sasquatch throwing this idea out there um, or this suggestion. I, yeah. I really do. Um, high five, virtual high five to you, Sasquatch. Thank you. Um, and, you know, just a quick note, anyone that's listening to the show, anyone who's a fan, if you have something you want us to listen to and or listen to, yeah, if you have suggestions for podcasts, we'll listen to those too. Um, but if you have suggestions for films to watch, specifically in the horror genre, uh, shoot us DMs, email us, um, tweet at us. It's however you want to get it to us. It's fine. Uh, we're always looking for different options. We have a huge backlog of movies that we we all want to watch, but um, Clark and I are both willing to throw our, I don't know what to describe it as, throw different 
uh, you know, movies in front of our picks. Basically, giving up a pick to watch something that our listeners want us to watch is, is a lot of fun as well. Um, Nightmare Cafe TV series. This is this is the it's show. Wes Craven's yeah. TV series. Yep. So Wes Craven wound up making a TV series. Uh, this this like you said, this one was originally planned to be a TV series, but the one that he actually did get the TV was Nightmare Cafe, starring Freddy Krueger himself as Blackie. People find themselves in like an all night cafe, which I think is just yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's a from bunch of dead people in a cafe. It's from I think it's a bunch of dead people going in a cafe and talking about their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I think it could be a lot of fun to watch. Um, maybe we can do something bonus wise for that. I, I, I maybe we can. Maybe. 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 I think this is right. a really good time to segue into. Hey, Clark, what have you been doing lately, pal, buddy, guy? I'm pointing my finger right now at you. Nope. You, you, whoever nope. it is, I'm pointing my finger at. <laughs> You're beautiful. And what I've been up to lately is uh, I have I, I have enlisted into getting my EMT training done. I th- I think I mentioned that like previously, but I guess I'll do it again. Uh, I'm getting certified as a uh, as an EMT. Just a, uh, it's not to change careers, it's to be a volunteer firefighter. And uh, once I get that done, I'll go on the next step. So that's my life. How about you, Curtis? What have you been up to? What's going Um, on in your life? Well, I took a, uh, knowing that we were going to be watching another Wes Craven film, obviously my favorite Wes Craven film um, and favorite franchise personally, my favorite, right? So don't at me is the scream series um but but what i wanted to kind of watch some more of what wes craven's been up to or what he's done in the past so i actually went and watched uh the serpent in the rainbow i don't know if you've seen that one it's got the dad from casper in it um it was it was interesting it wasn't um i wouldn't say it's like my style of film or my style of horror but uh it was it was it was good it's not a bad movie so anyone interested in checking it out if you've been if it's been on your list for a while and you want to do it just do it watch it it's worth it it's not going to hurt you yeah no sorry i was looking up uh, bill pullman Mm -hmm. is the name of the actor yes he's also jack in while you were sleeping which is probably my favorite romantic comedy we you know we've talked enough on this show about romantic comedies we may have to just throw one at our listeners just to be funny um that, and that, see what that's happens. an april fool's joke waiting to happen later on yeah but we've already got a good april fool's joke coming up no you don't want to do it anymore I, it I don't even much? know what you're talking about you're gonna have to watch it again you went and watched it with laurel god, are we doing that yeah we're doing it oh god oh All listeners, right, well listeners and viewers be ready be be uh be ready got, to, to be scared got five four four or five months yeah four or five months i got five on it oh golly um, gee whiz right, uh, after so this episode fun. drops but yeah let's let's kind of plug our stuff right now we'll let's plug our it. twitter and our instagram it is at the number two guys horror pod at both twitter and instagram we have polls surveys live watches all going on on Twitter. Instagram will usually push a little update here and there. A little less frequent with the posts, but the posts are quality, my friends, where we post in- updates on like when we do live streams, things like that. Um, if you want to get in communication with us, maybe you want to sponsor us. Maybe you want to drop a line and say, hey, watch this movie. Or hey, maybe have us on the, uh, the episode. Maybe we can collaborate. I don't know. Send us an email at the full thing spelled out, two guys and some horror at gmail.com. And thank you so much for checking us out and listening to us. Uh, check us out on YouTube as well as two guys and some horror. Hit that like bell, that subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'm done plugging. Thank you guys for listening. Have a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs>